All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I got my trusty assistant, Lucky. Ain't that right? <laughs> anyway, so today's video, we're gonna be taking off the actual heads. Um, so what you wanna do once you take most of all this, and it is morning, so the rooster's already cock a doo doo right? But anyways, so what you're gonna need is a socket and a wrench, which is a 16. That's what these uh, rocker bolts are. And what you want to do is do something. Oh, my bad. Uh, you want to make a system like this. Um, you can see the original numbers. Uh, that's from like when I was in high school when I made this box. And in college when we had to take part motors and stuff as a test. Uh, I brought this box and the teacher gave me extra points because he was like, yeah, you're the first student that uh, does this. This is old school way, you know, so you don't mess up where uh, which is which. So that's what I like to do is that whatever push rod, if it's not new, it's the original stuff, whatever push rod and rocker and stuff came out of each cylinder goes back to its corresponding spot because I don't want to mix up one and the other because if one is already wore to a certain, you know, if it's one is worn and the other one isn't, it's going to mess up the other one. And that one's going to be war and that brand new one that's from the other cylinder, it's going to be you know, basically saying, basically you're going to, mess up one that shouldn't be in either which way so that's why i gotta inspect them clean them and then make sure they're worthy to put back um so on the chevrolets i don't know if dodge is the same or not don't quote me on it but from the videos i've seen apparently it is i don't know but this is for the v6 and v8 it don't matter if it's tvi carbureted or vortex they're all the same i believe the ls should be exactly the same uh, cause it's always cylinder number one here and odds and then evens. So on the Chevy motor, that's the, that's the number We're facing the engine. Here's the fan, right? One, three, five, seven, and then the evens over here. And you can always look at the intake and exhaust. Exhaust is always first intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I mean, I messed up at some point, right? Uh, here, see? So exhaust is always first intake. They're both on the same. If you you know if you face them, of course the motor is kind of slanted, obviously, um, but it's always the exhaust and the intakes are all lined up, so you cannot mess it up. So both sides are the same. Exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So basically, exhaust always touches each other and the intakes as well. So there's no messing up at that point. Or just be like me do this get a box this is probably one of those uh, girl scout cookies yeah <laughs> so um so each one i'm gonna pull out take out i'm gonna put the push rod and the rocker and nut together here um when time comes when the heads are i'm gonna take the heads to the machine shop make sure this this head isn't cracked if it is i am not putting this motor back in here i'm gonna just swap with the with the vortex but the question is on the vortex i know it's a hundred and that's 150 thousand miles question would be would i might as well since it's already out do the head gaskets outside and do everything that i need to do compared to try to put it in here make sure cross fingers and then maybe not even two thousand miles later the head gasket goes up you know something like that you just never know it's one of the good questions to think like hmm the motor's already out might as well just do the head gasket i already got part number over there just going hey i need a part number i need a head gasket except for that one this one uh there's plans for it though so and not for me not to make extra work and then try to pull another motor from another truck so we have another truck that's out there my dad gave me it's a 95 as well me and my 95s the motor was good low mileage transmission was out it's a long wheel base single cab you know who cares right but um transmission was bad i think it was the reverse gear and first gear were out um so i pull it in here to take transmission out because this is before i bought this truck uh had the 95 transmission that i got from a suburban that's this one and i was like man i just swap out trannies and boom the truck would run uh long story short by the time i got the uh head the 
the man for the, the white pipe all that off i was literally to the point where it was all ready to go and i realized that the uh the uh the block had a big old crack on both sides where the motor mounts and that filter would be because it's two-wheel drive right there in the middle just a big old the big old jacket just of a, of a big crack water rusty right there i was like wow okay so the block is bad so what i'm getting to is the heads on that motor tvi as well will work on this in case this head is bad but i'm not gonna go out there and do all that and then the power steering pump it was a bitch to take off for some odd reason it just didn't want to come off right i uh, had the tool and this is what i did i just ended up cutting this pulley I didn't give rat's ass because I had bad history with these. So this open spot you see that's just missing, this lip literally snapped right off with the tool, the power steering power tool. So I cut it and then dad cut it, but he cut way too deep because that's that's what happened. So I'm going to need a new power steering pump. Uh, it may or may not leak, but I'm not taking a chance, not risking it. So... You need a new pump and pulley. I seen a pulley on Rock Auto, which I like, which has holes where you can just take off the, the bolts to move it out of the way so you can get to that bolt. That's not what I want to do on that truck because if I got to do that and this messes up inside the truck, and look, I got plenty of room, and that it's still messed up. Imagine inside a truck. So I don't feel like messing with that. Um, that will be on a later day. I'll just pull the motor completely and do that outside. Um... But like I said, the heads on that truck are still good. Anything really would be good, just the block isn't. So any of the push rods, lifters, whatever. And I don't know, I don't know if y'all mentioned, if I mentioned this, but this one has a, the, the deal style for a ro uh, roller. See, it's even threaded. I made sure it's threaded. Uh, on Project Sandy, it doesn't have these towers. It's just a straight uh, deal. Now I may be wrong though. I think the motor that I ordered from Jags is just like that, but that original motor might be different. I'm gonna go check later. I'll make sure it has the towers, but not the actual screws. And this one's ready to go. This one's ready to be adapted to a roller cam, but well, so yeah, the, the heads on that other truck on that mother motor, just swap them into this block. Cause this block is still good. Uh, we would have to check the cylinder walls first though. So when I take these heads off, take them off, some of the machine shop and whatnot, check the cylinder wall, especially number three, make sure there's no crack in the cylinder. If that is the case and not the head, well, I got two bad blocks. Well, I mean, that's repairable compared to a head. Um, but it is what it is, right? So in case that, like I said, worst case scenario, which I hope not, I, uh, that, that vortex is going to go in 50 plus horsepower. And then with the carburetor intake with TV adapter, all that extra stuff. And that TV adapter is a spacer as well, so it's two inch. So it's basically gonna end up looking like what we had originally with the that that auto block and then that spacer and stuff on that TBI. That sun that sun gun's gonna give me at least uh, from 50 just swapping the motors 50 extra horsepower, and that's a 210 horsepower motor. Like I said before, that's a suburban motor. Suburbans had actually a little more horsepower, I guess, for the extra weight, right? Carry people, whatnot. It's 210 plus 50. It's 260 and then with the upgrades and you know on the injection side right and, and, and even the ignition because i'm gonna replace it if that's the case on that one uh i will not put back the original one that's just the, the one i came with it um just buy a new distributor new ignition system so it's all good out of brass contacts because you don't want the aluminum that, that shit don't work um there's extra what maybe 20 horsepower at most maybe maybe right so at the end you're looking close to 300 horsepower which which is not bad i mean if this is going to be used for towing stuff i mean the 300 horsepower would be nice a little bit extra more torque right so let's just hope i mean this one even with that auto block and then all the upgrades i did from 195 which are these tbi motors are 195 um like I said, both motors have gone through the years. A little hearse purrs, a little bit of horsepower just went away. But just imagine the base number, 195 plus whatever the intake promised. I don't know what the rating was, like how much more horsepower. But just think about it, it's close to 200 something. 250 at most, because like I said, the TBI modifications. Well, it's not this one, but the 
spacer and all that but if i were to do the modifications like i did on the other truck it would be roughly 250 maybe maybe but it is what it is so like i said it's a 16 ratchet just take these off inspect i cannot stress this enough but inspect the actual studs on the old vortex 350 i had the one that's on the channel that brunette i sold that piece of shit truck um when i put i did a head gasket job and put all the stuff back and did the the adjustment valve adjustment um somehow it pulled a stud on the, on the bank two on cylinder number four and six both of them on the exhaust valve because uh, the exhaust because i put headers and th th those two ports basically were still black and the rest were already burnt off the paint so i knew there wasn't firing and sure enough the, the rocker was pulled out the, the stud so of course it's not going to open intake but no exhaust so that motherfucker was backfiring too coming back from the intake so it ain't no, ain't no good so uh i can't stress that enough either pin it weld it i don't care what i did i just put threads and threaded it in there and fixed the issue but the only problem was that the uh and you might want to make sure that thing ain't you know twisting too because then that's bad news you already know that the head's not gonna be no good <laughs> well just a stud so you do this on the rest of them i'm not gonna film the rest i'll make it a long video i will make a video of me adjusting these valves according to haynes uh, manual uh, now there's a different way but i'm gonna do it a certain type of way so see how it has the, the nut and then that little bow spacer or whatever and here's the push rod i'm just put that like right there uh, make sure there's no hole i don't want to make my bad if there was an interruption uh <laughs> i had to spook away a, a damn a damn chicken making too much noise all right so the push rod right we inspect the top it's not messed up it needs to be cleaned though a little bit of gasoline and diesel let's see not bad not bad so this is how it came out right i just flipped it so make sure the, the way it goes back the way it came out the way it goes back so this is the exhaust valve i know it's gonna fall on me yeah so i can't do it with one hand but you get the point the push rod will go here and everything else is gonna go within the push rod so let me just pause it and i'm gonna show you afterwards all right so like i was saying this is how it would look like. Uh, I'm not messed up that I didn't remember I did was I didn't make enough space. So they were going to be touching, kind of pushing each other outward. But the case is that they're going to the corresponding spot. So that's that's what you do. And then you inspect your your deal here. Like I said, just go along the, the ladder there. Uh, like I said, inspect the stud. You don't want this to be pulled out because then you will be having a bad bad day because imagine putting this back on like i did like i said everything was running good for like a day and the next day misfiring cylinder number four and six exhaust weren't hot i was like well damn <laughs> anyways so if i remember right what i asked at the machine shop was to basically check over the head and then go ahead and make sure all the the valves make sure everything's all good and go ahead and replace the uh them seals or whatever that were in here and i think that's what they did it like total for two heads with 225 250 i think which is not bad i mean replaced all the seals checked everything over and they were like it's all good but the the, the studs was like oh yeah well no that was we didn't check that was oh, shit so oh another thing what you would do with the push rod make sure that lifter uh still has a plunging action if not that lifter is no good you don't want that to go bad on you so um uh, i forgot to do that but with the next one i'll just do that make sure the each have play um and since there was a little bit of water in here when i pulled the intake um uh, it was oil but when you pulled the intake the water got in right um what i'm gonna do in here is get a little bit of diesel and a little bit of gasoline but mostly diesel and just mostly clean all this up it is not sludgy uh for like i said this motor has been worked on at some point um like the reason i say that at least the the intake manifolds or just i don't know 
I've never seen these before, black. Topros are blue, and there's no name on these. So I don't know if these are original or not. Um, but whatever the case is, um, like underneath, that's like a new deal because the original ones were, I think, orange. That's what, or black. That's what the uh, the Vortec ones were from the, the that brunette truck I'm talking about when I did head gaskets. All of them are black, so I'm guessing well, I could say those are original intake mints. I don't mean, I don't know. Why would you use the original ones or what brand are those? Because that is not a factory intake. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of makes me wonder. Um, but so far, um, we just keep on working on this and take the heads off and inspect them. I need to clean up over there on the table. I could do my little own test where I hit all the, the valve springs and stuff and pour water in them or gas or diesel. I, mean, I think I use water instead. I seem to be the guy use water. And if it leaks out bad and the valve seats need to be resurfaced, I guess. So I don't know. I don't know how that shit works. I'm not a machinist. I just know that the valves are, are leaking, basically. It'd be air, compression, or exhaust coming in and out, and it ain't no good. So, like I said, let's see whatever the machine shop can do. Because they, I, I mean, I, I would imagine they would do the same kind of test. But like, well, yeah, it's leaking, so we had to, I mean, hey, whatever, as long as there's no cracks within the head. Because like I said, cylinder number three is the only one that had coolant in it. Um, had the motor spinning, and water was spitting out through the, uh, the uh, spark plug hole. So there's water in the chamber, basically, in the exhaust chamber, I mean the exhaust chamber, the cylinder. So I don't know if it's from the intake or exhaust, if, I don't know how the cooling ports work in this, because I'm, I'm not, I'm a mechanic-ish, I mean I did go to school and all that, but I don't work on engine normal holes every day, so I just don't, and I never work on heads, I mean, I don't work on any of this type of stuff. So that's why I'm taking it slow, because I forgot how to. I, tell me to pour take apart or rebuild something over here or somewhere along this truck anything mostly that's not motor wise and so i've done it before but this would be my second technically third third motor doing heads uh head gaskets the first one was in college the second one was uh, and that was a v6 that was a vortex v6 the second one was the the one i did on my a truck but like i said so felt confident then i was kind of pissed at myself and didn't feel confident now i'm just like mm, i don't know <laughs> but you learn as you go so taking it slow um so yeah let me just con let me just finish all this and then the head bolts um when you get the new ones like i said i don't know what's gonna happen to this so that's why i haven't bought anything yet but the outer two uh one in the front and one in the back are medium size and then the rest are bigger size bolts and then the short bolts are all these on, on the bottom. So when you get the new ones and you're like, well, but where does these two go? Well, just look back at your old bolts. Uh, like I said, the outside two should be the mediums, the rest should be long ones and then the bottom, those right there are all short. So um, I don't remember the size. They're probably all the same, I'd imagine. They're probably 14s. Uh, that's 5.8s. Uh, that's 14, 14. Hell no. Okay, 15 then. That's a 19. I don't know what I did with the 15. Oh, it's over there. Just to check it out, we're gonna use a short socket here because I don't have my deep socket 15 for some reason it's missing. Hell no. That ain't no 15 either. Whew. I have a 16 on, on there right now. So, let's see. Yep, it's 16, so rocker, oh, 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 so rocker, nuts, and the head bolts are all 16, I would imagine. Yep, 16. Yep, 16, they're all 16 millimeter. So if you're taking your heads off, that's the, uh, that's the size you want to go with to take these off. They, now, if they feel a little bit loose, either somebody messed them up or they're standard, but... Um, like I said, let me get working to you here and the other side too. But first, I'm going to take this head off first because this is the one that's messed up. The other one, I can take it off later. And then I'm going to ask the machine shop, you know, what they can do or whatnot. 
so on how much they're gonna charge because this book 250 200 uh, uh, 25 was like back in 2020 it's 2022 everything went up on price so it might be 300 something dollars if that's the case it might not even be worth it but i don't know we'll see what happens um so let me get to it and i'll bring you all back what i find all right so I took the head off cylinder so number three was the one that was full of water uh the head gasket's over here at the head a little help of my dad because it is heavy so this is the front and this is the back because of the little plate and here's the stud for the accessories so cylinder number three is the only one that's very wet and here's the head gasket we found our culprit so the head gasket did fail so just throw that away because we don't need it so you can see it's all wet so the trick i learned And I send this to the machine shop. Uh, have them clean up and all that good stuff. So a trick that I learned from uh, along the way was if you hit with the rubber mallet on the springs, it would close the valves. You would fill these up with water or gas or whatever to see if they leak. So what we're gonna do, since this is already wet, uh, we're gonna clean this up a little bit kind of make it dry I wonder why I was running rich despite having the TBI rebuilt maybe the ignition system compression you will we'll find out later I mean compression could be one because of the water you know you never know so uh, you hit the hammer you get a cup of water and uh, you see it leak out so the movie get a cup of water Old dad's fixing his falcon. Um, get a cup of water and I just start checking it out. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna come back. So I got more of the water filled up. Guess what? Look at number three. And like I said, you hit the, the springs and all that so you close the valves. Look at that. Part of the trick is you get the air hose. Where is that? This one. Let me run it out of the stand. Oh, Come on, son. See how it's leaking bad? Trick of the trade is if you add air to it, it should be see bubbles up top. So let me do this. Oh. Yep, right around here somewhere. See how it's leaking? Let's try it here. They're not leaking, just number three. So, uh, that's that. So, time to take off the other one when I get a chance and do the same thing. But this is the one that needs to be worked on. So, uh, let me get most of this test done. That's how you check the stuff. And, uh, we get that on off. Well, let me just end this video. So, we took the other side off looks about the same you know dirty wise i don't know if i didn't check for leaks or anything but this cylinder i was noticing yesterday this cylinder see that right there and all of them they have a lip on top but that one right there is what concerns me and i need to turn these other cylinders to check out the other ones but at this point it's gonna need to be re-ringed or just completely rebuilt so something that i didn't want to happen but it looks like 
when I say things, it ends up being what it is. Um, we'll not put that Vortec motor in for the simple fact that it's also going to need um, basically a rebuild. If I put head gaskets and I see a cylinder that's going to be like that, then there's no point of me taking it apart. Uh, that motor is good enough to be rebuilt in this one too, but I would have to do it on my own, on my own time. Uh, by the complete kit. I don't know what size those those pistons are. I don't know if they're standard tent undersized or or what But it that cylinder needs to be bored out or because it won't hone won't do any good and if those scratches are a little bit deep, so be needs to probably be bored over 30 maybe 40 but uh so the plan now they want to do this but The plan now is to uh Hopefully get the machine shop to to be able to have enough space to take this motor in. This is what came out of Sandy. This is a true 355 with a cam and so forth. But the cam and uh, lifters failed. I think the lifter failed more than the cam. Um, so take this to the machine shop instead of taking the heads because that block is no good. And I don't have the money to go spend and rebuild another motor. And this one's here. So this motor is going to be going towards that. Sadly, I don't I don't want that but just to get it running and out of here um, so Yeah Sadly, we'll not be doing head gaskets on this It's gonna be fun to take out this motor out though this in the way but we will make it happen. So Sad day sad day um, Yeah So hopefully you like the video though um, We'll see what happens in the future, uh, hopefully in the near future, and hopefully you probably see that motor in here. So, uh, yeah, I need to buy a chip then, because I don't think this truck has a chip. I need to get some stuff in for it. So, we will see what happens. Uh, like I said, if you like the video, like, leave a like, comment down below for any questions, subscribe for more content, and check out the previous content, and, uh, yeah, catch you on the flip side.